Hey guys, welcome to a fun guide on fungi. Today I'm going to be talking about one of my favorite things I learned about during professional development, which was mushrooms, and I will also be drawing one. And for this, we have a special guest coming all the way from Target on State Street, a mushroom squishmallow. She is adorable and her name is Molly. She'll be my niece for the day, but we can get into it now. Now, I'm often wondering what even is a mushroom? So in history, they've often been mistaken to be plants, but mushrooms are actually classified as fungi, which is a biological kingdom of its own. Mushrooms usually have three main parts that make them easy to identify. The cap or the head of the mushroom, the stalk slash stem, and the gills are sometimes even pores that sit right underneath the cap. Now something not many people realize is that the mushroom itself is actually the fruit that sprouts from fungal spores once it's found to have a place to grow. The spores or seeds of these fruiting bodies are spread through all types of mode of transfer, but is usually spread by animal or more likely wind after being ejected from its gills. The spores tend to grow and propagate in temperate and moist areas. If they can't seem to find a place that is environmentally favorable, they can actually lay dormant until they do. Now mushrooms are generally known as grim reapers of our world, as we are taught that they are decomposers from a young age. They break down all things dead, dying, or even sometimes still living. However, their place in the world goes so much farther beyond that. Mushrooms are often found in the soil or on dead plant material for which they spawn. As they grow, the mycorrhiza in which the, there are these small hyphae that connect the mycorrhiza to the soil particles develop rapidly and become a huge network called mycelium. Mycelium then wraps around or bores into the roots of trees in order to exchange nitrogen, water, or any extra nutrients for what they'd like in return. Now mycelium can stretch so far as to connect individual plants with each other and can essentially build lines of communication. This is called a mycorrhizal network and these networks are crucial to keeping many plants pro prosperous throughout their entire lives. Many plants are dependent on these networks such as corn, wheat, or soybean, while others simply just benefit, such as birch or fir trees. But that's all I have for this video. I think I'm running out of time. So in this clip, you can see me. I'm a little, I may be a little irritated because uh, my video cut off in the end. But I still have the big reveal for my drawing. And it actually came out better than I expected. Uh, I'm doing a little happy dance because it's finished. But thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys later. Bye.